In all my years of doing YouTube, I never thought that the Saw series would be what actually started to skyrocket my channel and really bring in some traction in regards to just the YouTube community. But the thing that I didn't see coming the most was me on the channel talking about Saw the Video Game, which is a game released by Konami and Zombie Studios back in 2009, actually referenced as the spiritual successor to Silent Hill by Konami. Take that for what you will. So Saw the video game was released in 2009, as I said, coming to us from Konami and Zombie Studios, and in this game you play as David Tapp, one of the protagonists and police investigators of the Jigsaw Killer back in the original Saw film, who was later shot by Zepp Hindle. But supposedly at the end of Saw, canonically speaking, Jigsaw ended up tending to David Tapp's wounds and put him in his own game, due to his obsession of catching the Jigsaw Killer. Kind of sounds like, um, Carrie and... Daniel Riggs from Saw 3 and 4. Hmm, rehash. But in this game, you play as Detective David Tapp, where he finds himself in his own test, his own game in an abandoned asylum, where he is now a discredited police officer who went madly insane trying to catch the Jigsaw Killer due to the death of his partner, Stephen Singh, who died from tripping over a stupid bullshit tripwire with shotguns. We will talk about those things that are incorporated into this game. And one thing I need to mention is the fact that this game is supposedly canonical to the Saw movies. That's right, if you do a quick Google search, you will find out that these games, Saw and Saw 2 Flesh and Blood, are supposedly canonical to the Saw movies in regards to its timeline. In saying that, apparently David Tapp survived the gunshot from Zepp Hindle at the end of Saw 1. He supposedly got a son that we never even had mentioned in the first game, nor the movie that he actually was featured in within the Saw series. Yeah, you play as him as the protagonist in Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. But it is absolutely baffling to me this game actually even exists, because this game comes to us as I said from Konami, the same people who made Silent Hill, and they refer to this as the spiritual successor of Silent Hill, which is amazing to me, considering how bad this game is. I will say this right now, Saw the video game is an absolute train wreck of a fucking video game, but boy is it fun. This is one of the only video games I have ever played that goes into the so bad it's good territory. This is a game that I recently played on my channel. You guys voted for me to play it for my 10,000 subscriber special on stream early last week, a week from today actually. And with that, I decided to do an entire gameplay series because you guys seem to really love it. Like we were bringing in up to 200 to 300 concurrent viewers on my streams, which is the most I've ever had on any live stream between YouTube and Twitch out of all the time I've been streaming over the last 12 months. I want to say, first of all, thank you all so much for the support on those streams. And thank you all so much for the support over the last couple of weeks. The channel is really starting to pick up and grow. And it really means so much to me. Like it, it, it's honestly just absolutely incredible. And I feel like I owe it to you guys a lot because I've just been enjoying doing YouTube so much more over the last couple of weeks. Not only talking about a series and a property that I love, but also interacting with all of you and seeing all the support within the community and on the channel. It's been amazing. But at the same time, we're here to talk about Saw the video game, and this is by no means a good game whatsoever. But one thing I found very apparent while I was playing it was the fact that this is an enjoyably awful game. This is a hot fucking mess. But it is so much fun for all the goddamn wrong reasons. I had so much fun streaming it. And this isn't necessarily even going to be a review. I'm doing this video completely unscripted for the reason that there is just so much to talk about, of which I can't even express from writing down notes. I just need to talk about it off the top of my head. Because there are so many elements within Saw the video game that really just don't work from how messy it is in regards to the story and structure, the level design, the lighting, the graphics running on the Unreal 3 engine, and just the blatantly bland and generic look of the character character models like this this game is a hot fucking pile of garbage but boy is it fun now i played this game on the pc version i ended up finding a physical copy version for something like 75 cents at a bargain bin store and this is like a second hand copy that i played i used a gamepad because the pc controls really don't control all that well except for when you're going across uh balance beams yes there are multiple moments throughout the game where you have to actually go over a little bit of a high rise or these little gaps in the floor within the asylum that have been broken down and eroded and when i initially tried to do this with a controller for some reason even though you got to move forward with like the left stick and balance with the right stick it just would only balance to one side so therefore i was constantly throughout this game due to the buggy nature of the controller with just this moment i was switching between keyboard and mouse and the controller at multiple points throughout the game just to give you an idea of how poor the 
controls are in this game. There are many aspects of this game that are just broken, do not work. When going across one of these balance beams at one point, and I caught this live on stream, this game actually crashed. Because although I hadn't even started my process going across the beam, David Tapp ended up falling to his death through the fucking solid floor, and then the game ended up crashing, and it corrupted my save file on the game. I spent maybe 10 minutes trying to reboot the game and start it up, but every single time I loaded up that save file, the game would constantly keep crashing. So therefore, I had to load up an old save file of progress that I didn't want to have to earn back, but in the end, I had to, because that save file within the game corrupted itself due to a simple fucking glitch while playing it, causing the game to crash over and over again. This game is a glitching mess. There are moments where you'll be walking into like a wall and you will glitch up and your character model will bounce into the air a little bit. I would get stuck in certain terrains or areas. Moving around the sensitivity is an absolute nightmare. Like the control system in this game, even with a controller, feels like an absolute chore to work through. But boy, is it fun for this reason. There are so many broken aspects in regards to the game glitching out or bugging out with, you know, textures in the game just not loading in properly, where I would just be like, what the hell am I even playing? What the hell am I looking at? There are moments where you have to do these things to like puzzles. There was a moment early on in the game where I had to look at like these little tags on someone's foot and cut open their stomach to get a key that was, you know, inside of a dead body with barbed wire inside of it. But if you get the wrong one, you kill an innocent person. In saying this though, while you're doing that, you have to look at these little x-rays with the labels on it in regards to where the key is. And where you see the key, it has a label in regards to who the person's name is, where you have to look at that little tag on their toes or their feet to find out who it is that you actually need to open up. You you cannot read the fucking name tag because it is so... I can't... I don't even know if it's a ma matter of, um, what is it, the text is not loading in, or if the game just looks that bad. Because this game is so awful looking. This runs on the Unreal 3 engine back in 2009 and 2010, and it looks like absolute garbage. Everything feels so flat with the textures and the shadows and everything. Nothing feels like... And I was running this at max capacity on my PC. I was running this at max capacity, max graphics and everything, and it just ran like shit in regards to a visual look. The game's glitchy, it looks like garbage, but the worst part I think about this game that I need to talk about are the puzzles. Yes, this game is a puzzle-based survival horror, where you're making your way through an abandoned asylum in the sense of a jigsaw test and trap, where you as David Tapp have to constantly save other victims, whether that's Amanda Young, Melissa Singh, Oswald McGillicuddy, whoever that guy is, Arby Tate, who supposedly was in a trap involving fire before the furnace and Saw 2, because this game takes place between, between Saw 1 and Saw Saw 2, and then at the very end, you just interact with a guy named Jeff. No, not that Jeff, this Jeff. You know, this guy, whoever that is. It is so mind blowing to me that the traps in this game all boil down to you doing these incredibly randomly difficult, intricate puzzle sequences. One of them wasn't even too bad, and I call it the. What was it called? The needle or the toxin chair or something? Where it's Amanda Young and you're in a toxin chair. You as David Tapp have to put yourself in the chair into the trap and you have to do like this neurotoxin thing to do like an antidote or one that will actually kill you and have these little balls go back and in, out and out and put them into the right combination and puzzle sequence and pattern to be able to then release from the trap. This one wasn't too bad. This is easily the most intuitive one that you play in regards to the game, in regards to the just you know, the right amount of difficulty I feel to figure out this puzzle, but that point on, all the puzzles involving the traps are just unreasonably difficult. When you're trying to save Oswald McGillicuddy, it's a matter of doing these circuit breakers, which start off the first two are not too bad, where you have to line up the wires and everything to end up having the circuit breaker go to full capacity and do a full wire. It, ha it has to have an electrical current. But the final one literally acts on a boss battle on its own and took me over 25 minutes to actually get right because there is so much crap on your screen and it is so small, you can barely see what the flying fuck you were even looking at to be able to combine these things and actually line them up properly in regards to the circuit breaker to stop the back breaker from actually killing Oswald McGillicuddy. A fun little tidbit though, the back breaker in this game was the original idea for the trap of the rack in Saw 3. They couldn't figure out how they would actually bring it to life and they thought it would be a little too much in regards to the MPA. So therefore they actually ended up having to do some redesigns with the production designer David Hackle, writers Lee Winnell and uh, what is it, Darren Lynn Bowsman, who's also the director, and they ended up coming up with the rack instead. But in 2009 they decided that they were in court 
incorporate this botched and scrapped trap, the backbreaker, which acted as a folding table into Saw the video game. Just a fun little tidbit for you guys. I think that's a really cool detail, and that's one thing I will say about this game. Although the gore is terrible, you don't really get a good look at it because of the flashy nature of this game whenever someone is dying, trying to replicate the visual and stylistic take of the movies. You never see a good outcome in regards to someone dying. The blood splatter when it does happen is awful. You see that throughout the game with the Venus fly traps on random people's heads, or the shotgun collars, or the reverse bear traps, but when it actually comes to the gore within the trap sequences where you're having to do puzzles to actually get people out and victims, which by the way, you have to succeed to progress through the story. It is so flashy and you can never tell what's going on and you never get a good look of what the actual outcome is of these traps. But after that, you have a Melissa Singh, which is in a trap called the Iron Maiden, I think, where it's like these little, this little container that acts like, I'm gonna call Tutankhamun's tomb where it's just razors inside of it, and therefore it will close shut on her and grind her to a pulp. Ari Tate's trap, funny enough, is actually within a furnace where you have to do this obnoxious pipe-like puzzle, which was literally my worst fucking enemy in this game. Every single time this puzzle came up within the game, I actually just wanted to fucking turn it off. It is so randomly difficult, where everything is so close together, you can never see where the pipes are properly aligning to be able to sort this puzzle out. Eventually, I came up with a solution of going from the inside out in regards to lining up these pipes to be able to shut off the valves or whatever it is, but every single time, they're randomly difficult. There's so much on screen, and you can barely tell what's actually going on. It took me 25 minutes to get through RBTH trap alone. But this isn't the only time you have to do this trap. You don't you don't have to do this puzzle just in this sequence. There are multiple moments where a cyanide gas leak actually happens within the game where you then have to find a valve and do this puzzle over and over and over again. That's the thing in this game that is so obnoxious and so <laughs> annoying is the fact that you have to do the same overly difficult and randomly difficult puzzles over and over again, whether it's the one on the doors where you have to press A, B, X, or Y at a specific point which wasn't even too bad, or lining up the circuit breakers, or aligning the pipes, or stuff along those lines. This is the same shit that you have to do over and over again, which is randomly difficult, making for a very frustrating experience, where at times I actually wanted to punch my screen. But I just need to ask the question of who came up with the idea of this game? Who came up with the idea of this story? The thing is, this game is so randomly difficult and so broken in the sense of just the combat in regards to the visuals, in regards to the graphic. Basically, this is a glitchy ass fucking game that doesn't know what it wants to be, especially tonally, because this is supposed to be a survival horror game, but the scariest part about this game is how shitty it looks, how randomly difficult it looks, and just how bad it is. As I said, this isn't even really a review, this is just me talking about my experience of how, you know, hilariously awful this game is. But this is one of the only video games that has ever gone into so bad it's good territory. While this game is frustrating, randomly difficult, and just overly complicated, especially due to the awful level design where every single room looks the exact fucking same, making it an absolute nightmare and chore to navigate your way around the asylum, there was just something fun about this game, and there was something charming about how bad it was. The graphics and everything, and how broken the control system is, from you having to do the same intricate puzzles that were randomly difficult over and over again, to the awful dialogue and generic player models. This game is an enjoyable mess that at least is a funny playtime. Like, you can sit through this game, you can hate it all you want, but at the same time, I guarantee you that every person who plays this game at least enjoys it, whether it's genuinely, and that's completely fine. If you genuinely enjoy this game and think it's a good game, that is completely fine. That is your opinion. But when it comes to actually playing through this game, and if you don't think it's a good game, which I don't think a majority will, it is at least enjoyable. Like, there's just something charming and enjoyable about how bad this game is on every single level. It's a glitchy mess. It's a hilarious looking game in regards to the visuals and the graphics. The blood, the gore is awful. But that's not even the tip of the iceberg that makes this game really hilarious, but also incredibly frustrating. There are elements in this game that genuinely pissed me off multiple times. There are three elements in particular that just became my worst fucking enemies. One in regards to the shotgun color enemies, where the closer you are in the proximity of the people who have shotgun colors around their necks, if you don't get away from them and manage to evade them and block off their path in time, you will actually find yourself having your shotgun color, which you find 
on your neck around about an hour and a half to two hours into the game, you will actually have your head shot off. You will actually have it detonate because they're too close in the proximity with you. How the fuck does that work? I understand that David Tapp in this game has like apparently a key in his stomach that everyone inside the asylum is looking for to escape themselves, but come on. This is just ridiculous. And it's just randomly difficult as well because they come out of nowhere with no indication, just randomly. And sometimes you will try to evade them, block off their path by closing a door and bolting it. But when you actually do the thing to close the door by going to the other side to close it in behind you, they will either manage to sneak by the door when you close it, or your character model closes the door in front of you rather than behind you. So therefore you're actually still in the same room as them. There's also the glass all over the floor, which was incredibly frustrating because sometimes when you're making your way through a sort of environment in an asylum of which is absurdly dark I had the gamma all the way up and I still had trouble seeing what was in front of me half the time within the game and stepping on all this randomly broken glass all over the place actually deals damage to you makes you walk slower therefore dealing more damage and it just became really annoying after a while but my worst enemy in this entire fucking game is going to have to be the shotgun tripwires. The amount of times I had to restart a section over and over again with unreasonable checkpoints, which would send me back roughly five to 10 minutes of total playtime, having in the replay the same shit over and over again, because I tripped over a randomly placed shotgun tripwire was so frustrating and it's an insta kill. If you trip over these things, you die. You just die in the same way that Steven Singh did in the original Saw film. And it made for a very frustrating gameplay experience because you're not looking at the floor to disarm these traps. And even if you do, you can rearm them for enemies, but there is no point in doing them. There are traps that you can craft and create in this game, but they are absolutely useless. I shit you not in this entire game. I didn't use a single weapon besides my fucking fist because the wind up time with the combat in regards to every melee weapon is ridiculously small. The only other weapon I used was a revolver that you could pick up with a maximum of five bullets in it. And I would pick that up and it's basically, you know, a one-shot kill to any enemy around you. I would use that quite frequently, but in the end, I had a better time making my way throughout the asylum and the entire game whenever I encountered enemies just using my fists. They are the best weapons in the entire fucking game. Like, even the final boss of this game is ridiculously easy just to defeat with just your fist. Yes, they might grab you and you have to do this random sort of thumbstick sort of twirl around, match it up and everything to be able to let go of you and everything, but you just use your fist and you stun lock them and keep punching them for every enemy in this game. It is ridiculously easy just to stun lock every single enemy. You will not take any damage just by punching them in the face over and over again by holding L2 and clicking X. In regards to the story of this game, there is one thing I will never forgive about this game and that is the ending. There are two endings in this game. When you get to the end and after you've done an intricate sort of make your way around the asylum trying to find a key sort of section, you will find Finally, throughout the game for the first time provided a choice where you can choose either freedom or truth now I knew already what the canonical and main ending of the game was like the proper ending so I decided for the first time to choose truth because that is not the official ending of the game the official ending is the freedom ending given how Saw 2 flesh and blood starts up so choosing truth you do this elongated sort of chase sequence trying to track down Jigsaw and everything to try and finally capture him once and for all and bring justice to Detective Singh and every other Jigsaw victim but in the end when you actually beat the shit out of him and you've caught up to him you find out that it's just Melissa Singh with her mouth sewn shut who then trips over a shotgun tripwire dying in the same bullshit way her husband did. And then after that, you find out that Detective Tap just, you know, wakes up in an asylum and is reliving the events of the game over and over and over and over again, where he's in like some pendulum type trap from the beginning, early part of the game or something that you had to do with these cog wheels, which was also ridiculously difficult for no reason whatsoever. fucking ever. And you can't just think to yourself, no, that was just the bad ending. So when you actually reload up the game to get the second ending, which is what I did on stream, you choose truth and it automatically cuts to a cutscene where you find yourself as Detective Tap once again inside his apartment building, which we knew from the first movie itself, where he was spying on Dr. Gordon and everything and his wife and, you know, Zeb Hindle with all the newspaper articles. What does he do? Well, he just shoots himself in the head. 
he dies. In other words, the only endings of this game are bad. Like, all you can do is either be in an asylum for the rest of your life or shoot yourself in the head. No matter if you choose freedom or truth, you get a bad ending with the one moment in the game you are finally provided a choice. Not a choice in the sense of helping someone live or die, not in the sense of if someone fails their test or if you fail to save them, you progress through the game like it would in a Saw movie. No! No, no. It, you have to progress, and the moment that you're finally given a choice, it gives you a bullshit ending anyway. In the end, Saw the video game is one of the most broken video games I've ever played. It's hilariously bad in the sense that the dialogue and the acting in this game, not only that, the very generic player models, and the very half ass sort of very stilted visual look from the graphics make this game a hilarious gameplay experience on its own, but the glitchy nature of it, the randomly difficult puzzles that are not intricate in the slightest, make this game a an frustrating experience, but also a hilariously enjoyable one. This is a game I can see myself replaying a lot for the reason of it's a good pastime. It's a good game to just have fun and just joke about and to shit on while you're playing it. It's hilariously bad because of how broken and unfinished it actually is as a product. Not only that, how it completely butchers the Saw timeline even more because as I said early in the video, this is supposedly canon. And for that, Saw the video game has to be one of the only video games I put into the So Bad It's Good territory and one of the only guilty pleasure video games I've ever played. But I will say this, I do have a pitch. Konami, from my knowledge, still has rights to the video game in regards to the Saw property. So I pitch this. Here's how I would create a Saw video game. In the sense of The Walking Dead and Until Dawn, which actually had a scene in the game which replicated the Saw series. Why not have a point and click, choose your adventure sort of Saw game where your choices not only affect the story, but who lives or dies. Therefore, it's your own story in the sense of the butterfly effect in the same way as like Detroit Become Human, Life is Strange, The Walking Dead, or Until Dawn. Until Dawn did this brilliantly with Josh, Ashley, and Chris in that one sequence in chapter five, where there was a Saw sequence that was very similar to the series and it was really awesome you got to choose if Ashley or Josh died and it reminded you of Saw especially due to the voiceover the intercom in the sequence where you hear the supposed killer of the game actually doing like a hello Amanda I want to play a game it's a really cool thing and it gave me the idea of a point and click sort of your choices affect the story video game would be great for a Saw video game. It would be great, a point and click, choose, make your choice sort of Saw video game. So it's not even a matter always of your character making the choice of freedom or truth or live or die, but you as the player are as well. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for my video of Saw the video game, talking about the enjoyably horrible fucking mess it actually is. It's enjoyably awful, I stand by that. This is a fun game just because of how broken it is. This was completely unscripted, so if it's a little bit messy, I apologize, but I am gonna post it anyway, because this is just such a fun thing to talk about. And while recording this, I still had fun talking about it. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I will be doing Saw 2 Flesh and Blood on stream sometime soon. Hopefully, I'm getting my hands on my old PS3 and Xbox 360 soon. And I'm going to try and track down a copy on either the Xbox 360 or the PS3 to play for you guys. The only problem is it's a discontinued game, so therefore it's a little hard to actually find a copy. I was lucky with Saw the video game. But Saw 2 Flesh and Blood seems to be even harder to find, and if you can find it, it's either sold out or they're selling it for like 110 bucks on eBay, Gumtree, or Amazon, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I'm not going to pay 100 bucks for this game. <laughs> but either way, guys, I hope to stream that sometime soon, and I will be doing a very similar video for Saw 2 Flesh and Blood as this when that comes. But either way, guys, look out for more videos coming very, very soon. Tonight, I'll have up my review for The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, as well as more Saw-related content, my top 10 best kills with Pugapilla, which I can't wait to bring to you guys, my sister reacts to the Saw movie for the first time, as well as my Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 review coming to you guys very, very soon as you guys voted for it. Thank you all so much for joining me for this video. If you did enjoy it, do be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.